In order to record scores to appear in student progress reports, you first need to install PowerSchool's gradebook. PowerSchool's gradebook is not part of the application online. It is a separate application that you must install on your computer. To do that, log into PowerSchool. On the left side under navigation, you'll see new gradebook launch. You'll want to click on the run installer button. Click on installer. That will open up this page, which will show you the seven steps that you need to follow to install the gradebook. You'll download the installer, run the download, install it, continue, finish, activate, and then finally you'll come to click on the launch button and launch the installer or launch the gradebook. That gradebook will be a separate application that will appear on your computer. So I have mine on my desktop. It's also in my dock. It's a little ABC book. One issue you may run into in installing the gradebook is having the most updated version of Java. If you run into that problem, please contact someone at your school to help you, and if necessary, contact the help desk. After you've installed the gradebook, the next thing to do would be to open the gradebook to enter scores. Before you do that, I want to take a minute to explain the progress report to you. This is an example of the grade 3 progress report. It is a draft. It is not the final version of the progress report. However, it gives you an idea of what the progress report looks like. So this is for a student named Mickey Mouse in third grade at Irving Elementary School. You'll see that each subject area has a box with a black heading. So here's the math, English language arts, science, social studies, PE, art, music, and characteristics of successful learners. In each of the subject area boxes, there are gray areas. The gray area is the strand or the, the parent standard of the standards that you are using to assess your students. So operations and algebraic thinking has understands and solves problems using multiplication and division. There are several common core standards that go into that standard. However, you are providing one score for all of those standards for that quarter. So you're going to take the information from your Schoology gradebook, or if you have grades recorded um, on paper at this point, you're going to take all of those grades and decide on one score to provide your students for each of the standards listed in white. There is a column for each quarter, and grades will progressively add through each quarter. Finally, once you have the gradebook open, the first page you'll see says score sheet and says assignments right here. We're going to click on final grades first. And finally, check to make sure that you are on grading quarter one, reporting term quarter one. You'll see your courses listed over here. This example teacher has several courses, therefore this is a very long list. But this is an example. So these four math scores here fit into these four math scores here. One, two, three, and four. If you were to click on English language arts, there are several more standards in language, English language arts, so those appear here. Now they do not necessarily appear in the same order that they do on the progress report, so you will need to look closely when you go to enter in a score. So I'm going to switch back to my math class. If I hover over this with my arrow, it will show in larger print what the standard is. So this is the operations and algebraic thinking standard. So I would then go in here and enter in the score for my student. Let's say Mickey's getting a three. Let's say for the second standard, understands and compares fractions. Well, maybe we haven't started our fraction unit yet. Because there's only four standards, we may not have attacked these yet. So this might be not applicable, NA, I can type in for my student. And you'll notice it changes it to a capitalized NA. Finally, if I'm forgetting and somehow I accidentally enter a B in there because I think, oh, they got a B on that, it's going to tell me that it's not, it doesn't exist in the grade scale. Because remember, our grade scale is 1, 2, 3, and 4. It also will not accidentally let me put a 5 in because it's also not in the grade scale. So it's kind of a nice safeguard there. 
You do need to enter in a score for every standard, whether it's a score or it's not applicable at this time, meaning you haven't assessed it or for whatever reason that student is not going to be assessed on that standard at this time. So once you've entered in scores for everything, you can also add comments, and I'll show you comments in a couple minutes, but I do want to remind you, every time you enter in scores, you'll want to save. So now that their scores are there, I can move on to my second student, if I had one in this list, and enter in the scores for the second student, always saving often so that the grades don't get lost. Now you'll notice there is a C here under this bar, and this is an area where you can add a comment for third grade math. So I will double click on this box and I can come up to the comments area and in here I can type in a comment. Pleasure to have in class. And then close. And then you'll see a little C there and it has that comment added. If you notice here, that comment will appear down here for that subject. So you do have 250 characters to type in comments for your students. Once you've done that, you can switch to another course. It reminds you if you're going to click off a page, if you don't save it, it says, would you like to save the changes that have been made? I will say yes. So it makes sure you don't lose your work, but you always want to change it or save it no matter what. You go to each of your courses and add scores or not applicable and comments if necessary, always saving before you're done. To leave the gradebook, simply X out and it'll close out of the gradebook for you.